this can happen to the best of us and especially if you are a beginner where to look for leaking nozzles or leaking hot ends well in this video i'm going to show you on my prusa i3 mark 3s clone how to fix a leaking nozzle because black stains on white filaments you don't want to have right here on zachary 3d prints So after removing the parts cooling fan and also unscrewing two screws from the hot end fan, I'm now going to heat up the hot end to 250 degrees C. After the heating up, I'm going to clean the nozzle, the heater block and also other parts from the hot end. I do that so that everything is nice and clean and then I can also continue with the parts that are very important. So now on the back side we are going to unscrew the two upper screws and here on the front side those other screws. When that is done we can easily remove the motor and then we can take out the hot end right here. So the hot end is now out and oh my goodness, look at this here. This is one big mess. It's leaking all over. So I'm going to unscrew this part here. So this is how it looks like from the cold end looks like. So this needs also to be cleaned up because it still feels very sticky let's heat up the hot end and uh, let's not burn our fingers And so this is now how it looks like the cold end here, the heat throat and the nozzle. The heater block is all the way up here and everything is as clean as possible. And especially if you are going to compare it, how it used to look like, this is looking way better. So it's now cooled. We are going to add some thermal paste for here that when you are screwing it in that it is even more conductive and so i also cleaned this part right over here looks way better and also the same i did on this end so we are going to apply some thermal paste here and then we are screwing it right in there so for the thermal paste i'm going to use the boron nitrate thermal paste from slice engineering i'm going to use this thermal paste right on here
So. So. Now we are screwing it right in here. And the remaining we are going to get rid of. Just like that. Now we are going to screw the nozzle back in. It's the first thing that you need to do. So that was one part. Now we are going to screw this part in. But first we need to put the PTFE tube in there. So when you push the PTFE tube in here, you need to make sure that the black collet is going to pull backwards making sure that it doesn't move it is very crucial so when you push it in make sure to put push the collet outside so that it it's tight so now we are going to screw this part in as well let's see if I can get some so there's a little gap and it is exactly what we want we are putting this back in here So now the hot end is free, now I can put a wrench on the nozzle in order to hot tighten it. So for that I'm using a gripper because I don't have the right size and I want to put as much as possible tension on it so that this block isn't moving left or right. That would be terrible. So what I did was heating up the nozzle to a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. Now I use this gripper in order to hold it steady and using this one to tighten the hot end. And what do you know, I got a abnormality in the thermal uh, thing. I try to be as careful as possible in order to not touch the thermistor from the hot end, from the nozzle. So I got a little bleep, so I turned off the printer and then I took the gripper, put it on there and then tightened the whole thing up because it, it was already heated up to 250 degrees. This is not a torque range. If you have something like that, please use that instead because the, the force, the torque is 2.5 nanometers, something like that, or 22 LB, according to the instructions. So I tighten it as much as possible. So I'm not going to do it again because this was a loud beep. You don't wanna have that. This is now how it looks like. Now I'm going to assemble the final two parts and then we are good to start printing again. So if you ever have something like a lot of those black nasty um, roasted filament, make sure that you are checking out where the issue is because where the filament is bleeding out, that is usually the part where the issue lays. And for me, it was on top of the hot end because everything was seeping down. Yeah, it was looking ugly. The hot end is now 112 degrees Celsius. I wait till this cool down and then we are going to reassemble the whole part. We did do something with the hot end and the nozzle. So that means the first line calibration needs to be done again. And that is how you solve a leaking hot end or leaking nozzle on a Prusa i3 Mark III S clone. If you made it this far in this video, thank you. You are amazing. Please uh, like this video and uh, subscribe if you are not subscribed. And I will see you in the next one. Hey, and check out this video right over here. Come, check it out. You'll love it.